you know, the Cavs just blew out the Utah Jazz, which is interesting for a number of reasons, right? Utah Jazz, of course, Donovan Mitchell's old team. Utah Jazz, of course, um, has like a bunch of old Cavs on it, right? Um, uh, well, OJ Abaji was never a Calf, but he was drafted by the Cavs. Jordan Clarkson, um, Laurie Marketin, um, you know, Colin Sexton, a bunch of guys. And then Kelly Olynyk is, is on there, apparently. Forgot about him. He's not a former Calf. He's just hated in Cleveland. Um, but the Cavs played the Utah Jazz, and the Cavs, I mean, thoroughly dominated the Utah Jazz. I don't believe this game was ever close from start to finish. Like, there was never a moment where you felt like, hey, Utah might win this, or hey, Utah might get this thing close. It was an ass whooping. Um, and one of the things that I think has been interesting, right, has been the Cavs' defense, that ability, right? The defense has gotten so much better over the last few weeks. Um, and obviously with Jared Allen in, that's going to be better. Um, I think Evan Mobley took a leap. When Jared Allen was out last time, um, and now you're getting post leap Evan Mobley defensive stuff, right? Where he's just playing much better on that end. You're getting Jared Allen on the wing more. They're being more creative. Also, I think you're just getting more out of Isaac Okoro, who's a good defender in his own right. Um, and, and look, when Lamar Stevens is able to come, Stevens is able to come back. I think you can rotate those two in. Maybe a bench spot for Dean Wade when um when Ricky comes back and you got a bench now. You know what I mean? I think once Ricky comes back, the bench is gonna start looking more together and hopefully some of this wing stuff figures itself out, right? Because that's the best solution. But twelve points for Evan, what eight rebounds, so twelve and eight workman like day, only thirty minutes. The starting five didn't play much. Um, 30 minutes for everybody except for Donovan Mitchell, who only played 23 minutes. Um, and he had incredible production in those 23 minutes. Uh, Isaac Okoro, 30 minutes, 12 points, and then, what, four assists, two rebounds. And how many times did he get to the free throw line? Four times. Two trips to the free throw line. Um, Jared Allen, what, was 20? Oh, Jared Allen was good in this game, 20 and 11. He was just dominating the paint. I'm doing Jared Allen things. Cavs are just a very good team. Um, and then Darius Garland had a pretty efficient night, too. 7-11 from the field. Um, 2 of 4 from 3. So he shot 50%. 8 assists. 17 points. Not a crazy point total, but what, in 30 minutes? That's what you like to see. Only 11 shots. That's nice. Donovan Mitchell, though, man. <laughs> that man had 23 points in 23 minutes. 23 points in 23 minutes. He went 8 of 12 from the field, 4 of 5 from 3. 4 of 5 from 3. 4 of 5 from 3. That man shot 80%. Donovan Mitchell is not just a superstar. Like, you know, Donovan Mitchell used to be like a superstar that would be like, hey, he's a superstar for the Jazz, right? Like, I've heard that before. Nah, I think he's just like like this is this is modern day Dwayne Wade. Honestly, like the way I'm looking at it is this is a modern day like legit star. Like he is a starter on the Olympic team star, a starter on the All-Star team star, like a legit five-star star player. 23 minutes, 23 points. Four or five from three. He's shooting close to 45% this year from three. I mean, that's like Steph Curry numbers from three. It's crazy. It's crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy what he's doing. I mean, like, by proxy, he makes Darius Garland look bad to some people because you watch Donovan Mitchell do all this stuff, and you're like, oh, well, Darius isn't there yet. And Darius might never get to where Donovan Mitchell is. That's fine. A lot of players don't. Donovan's at a special place right now. I mean, he's efficient. He's scoring a ton of points. He He's playing great defense. People don't talk about him as one of the better players in the league right now, but he is, I think he's in the top five at least. Donovan's been dominant. I mean, I did a whole video about it. Kevin Love, 24 minutes, three points. Can't win them all. 
Um, but Jetty, though, 24 minutes, 22 points. He should have been a high man for real. Uh, he went 8 of 10 from – look, when Jetty is on, it is like nothing you have never seen before. Like, Jetty Osmond, when he's on fire, is probably one of the most entertaining bench players in the NBA because either he gives you nothing – or he gives you days where he goes 8 from 10 from the field in 5 of 6 from 3. My God. 5 of 6 from 3. And the only one he missed was a heat check. He went 5 of 6 from 3. <laughs> it's crazy, man. It's, it's better than what Donovan did. So, Jetty is one of those dudes who, look, he's not going to be consistent. But he's going to give you a random game in the playoffs where you're going to win it because Jetty just went hot off the bench. And that's fine. If that's what you ultimately get out of Jetty, that's fine. Karras has stabilized. I think him coming off the bench has stabilized his scoring, has stabilized his play. I think he's been much, much better since he's been coming off the bench and since he's gotten used to coming off the bench again. We're not getting these, like, 40-minute, four-point performances from him anymore. Um, you know, we're getting, like, 10, 12, sometimes 20, sometimes 22. Um, and then, you know, we're getting, like, more stable performance from Karras, which is fine. That's what you want out of Karras, right? Karras ain't going to average 20 points a game or anything like that. But if you get Karras to, like, a nice 15, that's where you want him to be at. Um, and then defensively, what Lowry had 22 points in the first half. He was kind of dominant in the first half. But then the Cavs just clamped that up in the second half, and he ended with how many points? Oh, my God, he only got two points the whole second half? This defense is crazy. Again, it's not like they're playing the world beaters, right? They're playing the Jazz, who are 17 and 16. So they're not a terrible team, but they're not a great team, especially on the road where they're 6 and 11. Um, and the Cavs are 15 and 2. The Cavs are legit, like probably the best team in the NBA at home. Um, but Larry, Larry, not Larry marketed, Larry marketed 24 points with Jared Vanderbilt, Kessler, and Mike Conley only seven. Jordan Clarkson had a smooth 23. He was pretty good in the second half of this game. Um, and then Rudy Gay, only five points. It felt like he had like he had like a stretch where he got like a couple buckets. But yeah, it's this team's strength is interesting because last year was all about the defense and only about what this defense can do to create offense and then whatever Darius Garland can add in between. And that worked as far as getting you to a play-in game with injuries. You were a top four seed in the East or something until those injuries happened, and you went pretty far with that. What's going to be interesting this year is to see how far can this Cavs team go now that they are not just a great defensive team, Honestly, I think they're a they're about as good as they were last year defensively. Maybe a slight drop off because you're not running three seven footers out there all the time. But I think they've adjusted and actually found something better when they're putting um, Jared Allen and, and Evan Mobley on the wing more often, and then allowing those two to just be themselves, be their special selves. I think they found something better, quite frankly. So I think the defense is better. And the offense, I mean, my goodness, it's so much better. And it's literally like Evan Mobley's getting a better offensive game, right? He's starting to develop a little bit of a bag on offense, which is good, right? He's starting to have that Euro step in transition. He has a corner three that he can hit every once in a while. Um, when he gets downhill, he's able to do some things with a little spin move. Like he's starting to develop his bag, his little push shot. He's, he's really like putting the fine pieces together to get his bag. And I think Evan, by the end of this year, probably, like, I wouldn't be surprised if the last 10, 15 games of the regular season and in the playoffs, we're talking about Evan Mobley averaging about, like, 17 points per game in that specific stretch because the bag is coming for him, right? I think it, it's really coming. It's really obvious with him. Um Isaac is starting to become more confident with with this transition stuff. And when Isaac is confident, he's a pretty productive player. Um, and he's justifiable to have out there defensively. He's not going to ever be a great three-point shooter, but he's really good in transition. He's really good on defense against specific type players. The thing with Isaac, though, is that he's only like 6'5". And the Cavs need for a wing defender somebody who's like 6'8", more lengthy than he is. Um... Because what Isaac was really good for when, like, 
Colin was still here, right? Was he can be a, a he can defend, you know, somebody else's guard, right? You don't really need that with Donovan because Donovan has been a really good defender as a guard. Um, so you don't really need Isaac to defend guards and you need him to defend wings more often. And he's not necessarily equipped physically to be a great wing defender because he's not long enough. But he's good enough for most nights. Um, other nights you're going to want somebody longer like Lamar Stevens in there. Um but yeah, he's just in an interesting spot to where his role might be a little bit, a little bit diminished just because Donovan Mitchell is such a good defender. Um, Darius is fine at the point guard spot for for what he has to do, um, but Donovan's been such a good defender that it, it really has put everybody in a bind. And when they're running out lineups here, where they have Donovan, Jared Allen, Evan Mobley, and whichever wing of choice, right, whether it's Isaac or is Lamar Stevens, you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, Darius Garland is out there, and Darius is not the biggest defender out there, but he's still a solid defender, and then you have four great defenders behind him. That, that's that's the strength of this team is still, like, the defense and the offense. Donovan Mitchell not just being who he was in, in, in um, Utah, but being much better than he was in Utah. I don't know how far this Cavs team goes. Right, I don't want to set expectations to be like, hey, there's going to be a finals team or an Eastern Conference, and I don't think that's how we should consume this season. I think we should just enjoy it for what it is as the first significant Cavalier season in a long time without, you know, the LeBronness of it, right? Like doing something outside of the shadow of LeBron, not saying that anybody is like um, angry or vengeful towards him, just saying like, you know, hey, it's nice to do stuff outside of the shadow that you exist in, and it's a grateful shadow to exist in because LeBron did great things while he was here. But you want to do other stuff, and the Cavs are going to be able to do that this year. I'm going to enjoy this season for what it is, but, man, this season, is this team, the potential of this team going forward is crazy, um, and I think the fun factor of this team is also crazy so just enjoy this season because boy this team is really giving it to you 21 and fit and 11 21 and 11 is the record you realize that that's the second highest win total in the nba the Cavs are i think milwaukee's at 22 as of right now boston's at 22 the Cavs are at 21 that's the second highest win total in the nba gotta be grateful for it gotta be grateful for it but that's it for this video. Y'all have a great day. Have a good night.